You see, which of the warmongers would you like to have been from the Second World War? I mean, Hitler with his um, um, disastrous outcome in the end. Um, a face full of rotting teeth and uh, perhaps suicide or perhaps exile in uh, some South American country or something. You don't know, do you? But, you know, the... Is it ignominity or the disastrous outcome for Germany and... Or would you rather have been Churchill? Another warmonger. Plagued with depression. Being held in contempt as a warmonger too. And unappreciated, even when he's successful, <laughs> wins the war. I mean, hardly single-handed. It was really the Russian effort, and topped off by the American input of resources. You know, and when he does finally get re-elected to office, somewhere in the 50s there. Well, he's a great wartime prime minister, but not an outstanding peacetime prime minister by any means. Do you see it's not what one hopes for? And that is the lesson. Necessary, yes. And the person that is appropriate to the necessity comes to the fore. You could say Hitler too in his solution for Germany in the early years seemed to be what so many Germans felt was so right and necessary, expedient, given the awful consequences of the so-called armistice of the Second, of the First World War, and the tragedy of the Great Depression of the 1930s, awful in Germany as much as anywhere else. And their saviour comes, a warring saviour comes to the rescue at obviously appalling expense. Even to themselves and to the rest of the world Thank you, Heavenly Dad. I say that with an utter lack of enthusiasm, but I hope nonetheless that in some sense it was meaningful. In some bizarre way it's right. But it's so bad, in fact, that it's beyond my comprehension. And I just leave it there. Some things I just leave to Almighty God. In trust. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. It in a sense, I feel the world ended in 1945, both in Europe and in the Pacific. Um, to put it mildly, too many died. To think of it in any other terms. Left a world that still convinced that war is the solution ultimately in disputes that can't be resolved. 
not a tragedy of misunderstanding. It's a tragedy of lack of love. And there's not much you can do about your enemy's um, deficiency in this regard. Only your own. And allow this universe of the transitory to continue its transitory nature of contrast between good and evil. And the lessons that it reels off. And that sounds extremely negative, put like that. And it's how children feel very often. Why can't I have so-and-so? Why doesn't mum allow me to do such-and-such? Why is dad strict on this? I don't understand. And then it depends on the nature of the child. Is it that they don't understand and therefore they get frustrated and filled with um, anger and frustration? Or is it that they resolve to just trust the parents and uh, enjoy what is to be enjoyed? <laughs> Some kids um, seem quite angelic in that way. And you wonder why they came. <laughs> He should be in heaven. He's so adorable. How can I protect him? <laughs> How can I care for her? How can I? Oh my goodness, I don't want them to go to school. They might get treated badly there. <laughs> and you're right, they will be. Uh, you'd be much wiser to treat them, teach them at home. Um, but that has its problems. You can no longer just be the wonderful parent then. The, uh, you're the cause of their difficulties, any difficulties that they perceive they have. So it's not an easy ride. <laughs> but it can be very rewarding, of course. I mean, this is the role of the parent, isn't it? It's not an easy job being God. <laughs> I guess it helps if you have God's understanding and supernatural powers. And, uh, well, you as a parent may need to uh, take recourse to such. Um, in your practice of parenthood. Bless you.